Hey budgeties, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you are new, my name is Mo, I'm 27 and I'm working on my financial freedom journey. If you're returning, thank you much for returning. Happy New Year, okay, can we start there? Happy New Year, it is 2023. I don't know, like time is flying, I'm getting old or what, okay? But anyways, if you've seen the titles of this video, then you know that I'm gonna be talking about my fire journey. So let's get into it because you're probably going to be like, what is that? If you're new to it. If you're not new to it, then you're like, sis, I know what it is. Some people think it's scammy-ish, bum-ish. I don't understand why. And then some people love it, you know? And then there's those who are in the gray in between and just have no idea what it is. So I'm just going to talk to you, tell you my interpretation of what it is um, and get down to my numbers and my stocks my etfs things like that okay i'm giving you the numbers I'm, I'm showing you the screen captures and all okay so first things first fire what is it it's financial independence retire early so much of what it sounds is what it is <laughs> you want to become financially independent because you want to retire early now a lot of that is what people do not like they're like girl you're going to retire early some people retire at 40 and they're just people are just so flabbergasted. They don't understand what that means. But really, when somebody says retire early, it doesn't mean that they no longer have any job. It means that they don't have to have a job to pay their bills, okay? They've invested their money so well that they can live off of their investments. Now, there are different types of fire journeys. There are ones where you can be like a barista making a little bit of money, but all your bills are actually being paid off from your investments if that makes any type of sense. Like you can be like a part-time fire. I don't know, I'm sure there's like critically acclaimed correct words for it, but there's different levels to it. There are some people who, yeah, they're like, okay, in 10, 20 years, I'm trying to be officially retired and I don't wanna ever work a day in my life. And then some people are like, well, what are you gonna do? What I wanna do, which at this point, it's whatever, I guess if you gotta know what you wanna do, that would be, you know, a battle for itself. So I, and my boo, we are going to partake in the F-I-R-E fire journey, okay? So one of the things you're probably thinking, okay, so yes, I want to be financially independent. I want to retire early. How do I do that? So doing your research, um, I well, doing my research, I found out that in order to do that, you for one have to know your annual expenses, okay? No, all of your annual expenses, all of the bills, everything that you have to pay for. Now, granted, your life may look different later on, but y'all know me, I like to do worst case scenarios. So that's the first thing. First, know your annual expenses. Then from there, um, there was a paper written, I think in like 1999, just talking about how to successfully retire and invest your money. So I'm letting you guys know, I don't know why this number is about, but it came from this article, I'm sorry, this paper that was written. And basically they said, multiply <clears throat> your annual expenses, excuse me, expenses times 25, okay? You're gonna take your annual expenses, times that by 25, and that is the money that you should be, that you should have in your investment accounts. To give a little bit more information, because I kind of feel like I've, it went around this part. So how do you become like, are able to retire early off of your paycheck. It's solely in investing your money, investing your money in stocks, investing your money in ETS, and investing your money in, you know, whatever, because you get a higher return value or return rate on your money than opposed to just saving it, you know, and getting maybe a 1% or whatever you may get, even with high yield saving account. Um, over the years, you know, the stock market has proven to be much more beneficial um, than just having your money sit under your mattress or like I said, in your savings account. So that's where the money will go. The money will go into be invested. Now, what becomes the problem with this is that usually if you're working your full-time job, it's hard to create that big number once you times your um, full-time, I'm sorry, your annual expenses by 25, it's gonna give you a grand number, right? Because a lot of people annual expenses are gonna be extremely high considering mortgage, or rent or all other bills, right? So obviously the number is gonna be high and people usually like, well, how am I gonna equate to that number 10, 20, 30 years, whatever, you know, your time span is to become, you know, financially independent, retire early, your fire journey. Well, the thing is you definitely have to, most people create side hustles, whether it be Etsy shops, whether it be watching dogs, washing cars, or 
flipping houses, they create some other source of extra income to go ahead and um, boost the momentum, right? And a lot of times people put more than 50% of their money that they bring in towards this. Now, I realize that partaking in a fire journey is super, like it's, it's a privilege, right? And it's it can be unheard of for some people. Like you think, wow, you put 50% of your money that you bring into your home, not before tax, we're talking after tax, that you bring into your home and you put it in and you're able to invest it. Whereas some people, maybe their rent or you know their household bills is over the amount they're getting paid so i realized that this might not be realistic for everyone but here i am just letting you guys know the facts so now that i've kind of like given you a little dialogue of what it is i'm gonna go ahead and go over my numbers and first we're gonna start out with when i say my i'm talking about me and my booze our annual expenses let's get right into that okay so starting off with my annual expenses um so I'm going to start off with rent. I want you guys to be mindful that everything I'm writing, I am um, like rounding up for worst case scenarios. Like I said previously, you want to do something that's worst case just so you can always be prepared. You know, have a little go over on the money that you want to have saved. So for me, I'm just going to say that rent is going to be $1,800. Obviously, I don't want to rent forever. Um, I would like to own a home and I would like my cost of my living to definitely go down. But like I said, worst case scenario. So we have rent, we have electricity, we have internet. That's going to be $52. Um, we have, so I'm going to say boo car. And so for me, boo car is my boo's car note, $150. You're probably thinking, how does somebody have a $150 car note? He bought a really old car and put a lot of money down. So that's why, and it was a couple years ago. So his car note is $150. Um, also his car insurance. So I'm gonna put boo, I'm gonna say car ins insurance. So his car insurance is also gonna be $150. So mind you, what I'm doing right now is writing out the monthly. I know I need to know annually, but I'm writing out all the expenses that we have um, monthly wise, and then we'll, times it by 12 to go ahead and get um, the annual. So, so I'm gonna say my insurance, this is for my car, I'm gonna say it's $150 a month, which is not, like I said, going up, worst case scenario. My phone bill that I pay is gonna be $130. And then also food for the household, like groceries, um, it's gonna be $500 or that's what we think it's gonna be. And then student loans, he has student loans, I have student loans. That's another thing about the FIRE journey. Most times people go hard on their debt so they can put more money towards you know their journey. But it doesn't mean you can't do both of them at the same time. So I'm putting student loans for both of us. I have a substantial amount more than he does, but I'm gonna go ahead and put $1,000 um, for the time being. And then gas, as far as like gas in our cars go, uh, a month we're gonna say $150 we don't spend too too much money on that then just for um room for era we went ahead and just said $300 and I'm saying we because we did this we did this together so these are our monthly expenses let's write that monthly expenses boom to make it that as cute as possible <laughs> okay so these are monthly expenses let's go ahead and calculate this so we have eighteen hundred dollars plus 120 plus 52 plus 150 plus 150 plus 150 plus 130 plus 500 plus one thousand plus one hundred and fifty plus three hundred it's four thousand five hundred and two dollars i'm gonna do that one more time make sure i'm not going insane in the membrane so let's clear it so we got 1800 plus 120 plus 52 plus 150 plus 150 plus 150 plus 130 plus 500 plus 
1,000 plus 150 plus 300. So again, that is $4,502, $4,502. This is monthly how much it takes for both of us, all of these bills, right? Hopefully, like I said, we'll get this down, but right now this is our reality. Okay, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna times it by 12 because it's monthly, okay? And then this number we get here, right? Is gonna be our annual expenses. Annual expenses. Okay, so 4,502, uh-uh, yeah, times 12. That's gonna be $54,000. $24. So it cost us to live off of currently $54,024. Ridiculous. So I'm going to highlight this for annual, I'm sorry, for monthly. Okay. Cause that's what this is. Monthly. Now I'm going to highlight this in orange. Uh-oh, color. Okay, um, in orange for our annual expenses. Okay, we have annual, and that's this. So, like I said, from the document that I read, you multiply it times 25, I did see there are other like studies and papers written about it, and it doesn't have to be 25, it can be 30, 33, whatever. I'm showing you guys the number we're doing, which is times 25. So we take this number, we times this by 25 and this is going to be our goal and as you can tell if it's 54,024 you already know it's going to be a lot so let's tap into it so we have 54,024 times 25 $1,350,600 can y'all see that yikes that's a big number but here we are so it's definitely gonna be 1.3 million. Um, we should round up and say 1.4 million, but I'm gonna write the number for its full face value. Okay, do I have a different color to highlight? Cause she wants to highlight this. Yes, blue. <clears throat> so this right here is our fire goal. I'm gonna write that here, fire goal. Boom, there it is. So in order for us to reach fire, we wanna get $1,350,600. Now the next question is, now that we know our numbers, the next question for us would be, um, how old or would we like to do it or how many years? We personally would like to do it when we're 40. So I'm one, years old. I'm one year older than my boo. So this year I turned 28, this year he turns 27, okay? So, if we say 28, that would give us uh, 12 years because 40 minus 28 is 12. So, that would give us 12 years. So, if we do this number, $1,350,600, and we divide that by 12, every year we need to put $112,550 towards our fire journey. And I know you're like, yikes! Cause we were like, yikes also, okay? So let's write this down. We need to contribute six figures, $112,550 a year to this journey in order to reach this. Now this is not calculating any possible dividend growth or interest or anything that we would gain on our actual, in the market, you know what I mean? This is just outright by itself. So that's a lot of money. To be honest with you, I make, we we don't even make that much. Like maybe together, yes, but separately, no, okay? We're both under the six figures and it was very intimidating to us. But then this is where we were like, okay, how are we gonna get to this number? So currently our goal this year, if you haven't seen my January budget, make sure you guys go check that out. But my goal, our goal this year is to do $1,500 a month, right? This is our first year. We're figuring it out. And we're just saying $1,500 from our full-time jobs, okay, y'all? $1,500 from our full-time jobs. 
So let's write that down. So $1,500 um, a month times 12. So that means for this year, we're going to be investing $18,000, okay? 18,000. This year, that's 2023. Now at minimum, that's what we're trying to do at minimum. Now, yes, if the question is, do we already have certain accounts? Yes, we do. What accounts? I'm going to cover that and how much. So this right here is basically, you know, our goals. Something we would like to do, again, it's 12 years. A year, I'm going to write here for 12 years. So we can equal 40. And when I say eat, we, I mean me. This would be a goal of ours. Um, like I said, we know we're not going to be able to do it, only our full-time jobs. So we're going to have side hustles. For me, YouTube will be a major part. Um, if I'm able to gain money monthly from YouTube, that will be going to my investment portfolios, our invest, mine, yeah, we, I'll explain that. But my investment portfolios. And then um, same thing with maybe my business, extra money not including in buying supplies. Then he also has a business that he's starting up with vending machines. So our hope is that that will bring in at, um, extra added revenue so we can also contribute. So the next question is, do we have accounts and what are in those accounts? So yes, we do have accounts. Let's get another piece of paper to write on. Okay, so what does our accounts look like and what do we have going on? So, I currently have invested more money than he has, um, which is fine, but I'm going to explain to you guys what we're going to do. So, I'm going to say me here and my boo here. Okay, so the plan is to have two accounts per person, okay, and we both already have these accounts. So, first things, uh, we both have M1 accounts. These are just investment accounts that we have. He, like I said, does not have a lot saved at the moment, but we're just now getting on the same page with this. So there's that. He has $150. I currently have a little over $2,400, but keep in mind the stock market is not been our friend at this particular moment, which is a good time to buy. So my stocks have gone down. So then there's that. This is where we're going to do our stock investments, right? This is where we're going to have our portfolios where most of our money is going into stocks. Amazon, Apple, whatever you can think of. And I, like I said, I'm going to share the screen with you guys later on. So that is that. Then we, all, we also have a two different um, accounts. So for me, I have Fidelity. And then he has Vanguard. Okay. So um, I opened up my Fidelity account at the top of December and I have about $700 in here and he just opened his Vanguard. So that one has nothing in it. Okay. So this is where we are currently. Not a lot, not too much. Like I said, this is, this is just our starting point. And I'm going to go ahead now and share with you guys, um, some of the stocks that I have with my M1, as well as my Fidelity account, which holds mostly, if not all ETFs. So here's my M1 um, account when I go and log in. So basically I have three different portfolios or accounts. I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to say it, but basically you can create different pies, right? To have different um, stocks and ETFs or whatever in it. So the first one you guys are looking at is the investing pie. I title it investing, I don't know, just to be obvious because <laughs> I'm investing. And I went crazy. I read somewhere that you should have a diverse portfolio. And that's literally what I did. Like this ranges from a whole bunch of ETFs with Vanguard, um, SPDR, I, I call it Spider. I might be wrong. S&P 500. I have Amazon, um, McDonald's, PG, Netflix, Boeing, Starbucks, Warner Brothers, um, Disney, Tesla, Truist, as far as the bank, Chevron, Oracle, Visa, Coca-Cola, a lot of different things here. Um, just so I can get my feet wet. Um, so this is the very first portfolio I made. Then the second portfolio you're about to see is my dividend pie portfolio. Now this is very, very new. As you can see, it's under $100. Um, so M1 has these pre-selected portfolios or pre-selected pies that if you want to mimic it, you can. And I literally didn't choose this. I simply mimicked a dividend pie. And you're like, why? Because they say they give you more dividends, which means you get more money in return. And your girl wants more money. Like, who doesn't want that? 
So this one doesn't have a lot. I will do better with trying to invest with this. Most of these are ETFs actually, I've, but yeah. So this is a work in progress. My final um, investment portfolio with M1 is my retirement fund. This one was also created in 2021 around the same time I did my investing one. In my mind, I was gonna do solely ETFs, but then I decided uh, to not just do ETFs. I also did some stocks. Um, I do, you're probably wondering how do you choose these. I do my research. I listen to, listen to um, podcasts, read some books, see what aligns with maybe my goals. Um, not my beliefs, but with my goals. So I also like invested in something oxy because i saw that warren buffett invested in oxy and i'm like oh i feel like this stock is going to go up very high considering so i definitely try to keep up to day to day or like what's going on in the news because that affects the stocks so this yeah this has apple johnson and johnson swab um chevron it also has vanguard and some other etfs so this here is my retirement fund with m1 so this is my Fidelity account. I literally just opened this December 14th and put in $75. Fidelity had a deal where if you put in at least $50, they give you $150. So I didn't include that much. But as you can see, I only have three different ETFs chosen here. Um, so the Vet Fidelity's Zero Total Market as well as the Fidelity Zero International Index. And then I have the Fidelity Real Estate Index Fund. So it's not a lot. I did tell you guys I have $700. And that's because I do, um, just the remaining of the money didn't hit exactly yet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this was something new for me, sharing about stocks and my fire journey. I hope you all liked it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.